During the Raiders' Week 4 loss to the LA Chargers, a group of Raiders fans made their way to Mark Davis's box at SoFi Stadium. They began chanting, Fire McDaniels. Davis responded, Oh, the irony. I have warned you about Josh McDaniels, twice actually. Now, a season and a half into his coaching tenure with Las Vegas, he's repeating the same mistakes that made him a failure in Denver. This man has learned nothing. Let's look at this train wreck right after this. The dark and the cold of winter is coming and you're going to want to leave your house less and less. That's where Factor comes in. With Factor, healthy, delicious meals are delivered right to your door with no prep and no mess and without getting off your couch. These never frozen meals are fresh and literally only take two minutes to heat up. My favorite thing is that these meals are filling and delicious and around 550 calories or less. And you can try Protein Plus meals for an added 30 grams of protein more per serving. Enjoy a nice warm meal in the comfort of your home. That's healthy too. Factor now offers 35 plus different meals per week and 45 plus add-on options like smoothies, juices, snacks, even breakfast. I love these cold pressed juices that come in a variety of flavors and they are delicious. And if you wanna be even lazier, Factor has effortless meals like grain bowls and salad toppers, ready to eat and tasty. So after this video, head to factor75.com or click the link below and use code 5points50 to get 50% off your first Factor box. Again, that's factor75.com from the link below and use code 5points50 to get 50% off your first box. Let's back up and review Josh McDaniel's first go round as a head coach when he was fired after less than two seasons in Denver. After McDaniels proved himself as an offensive mind in New England in 2007 and 2008, McDaniels became a hot commodity on the coaching carousel and the Denver Broncos handpicked him to succeed Mike Shanahan, the greatest coach in their franchise's history. McDaniels inherited a cast of stud playmakers on an offense led by Jay Cutler, a 26-year-old quarterback coming off of a Pro Bowl season. He took that offense, which compiled the second most yards in the league in 2008, and systematically gutted it to its core over the next two years. What the fuck are you doing? At some point will you learn the fucking plays in the National Football League? Jesus fucking Christ. It started with Cutler. McDaniels publicly shopped his incumbent quarterback in a hypothetical deal involving Matt Castle. And when that deal fell through, Cutler wanted out. McDaniels, who was the de facto GM in Denver, shipped Cutler to the Bears for Kyle Orton and a slew of picks. Picks that he squandered. It wasn't just the quarterback. McDaniels alienated Brandon Marshall, who caught 101 passes in 2009 and was promptly shown the door in the offseason. Tight end Tony Scheffler was neutered and jettisoned. Eddie Royal, a promising rookie wide receiver who put up nearly a thousand yards as a rookie, saw his targets drop from 91 to just 37 in just one year. McDaniels tore down the Shanahan Broncos and reconstructed them in the Patriots image. But like a clone that keeps degenerating with every copy, it only got worse. And now, 13 years later, he's done it again with the Las Vegas Raiders. It gets forgotten too easily, but the Raiders were a playoff team in 2021. They battled through a deadly tragedy at the hands of Henry Ruggs and a mid-season scandal that got John Gruden fired to finish 10 and seven, falling in a close playoff game on the road to the eventual AFC champion Bengals. This was not a broken team, far from it. It was Mark Davis' decision to replace beloved interim Rich Bisaccia with Josh McDaniels. But it was McDaniels that took a playoff team and wore it to the ground. You could make the case that the Raiders were a fluke playoff team in 2021. And you might be right. They were outscored by 65 points that season, but 66 of those came at the hands of the Kansas City Chiefs, a team they were not so uniquely unequipped to handle. Bisaccia had the Raiders winning four straight close games at the end of the season. And despite difficult circumstances, they were a team with chemistry, 10 and seven became six and 11 one year into McDaniel's regime. Let's try to understand why. Hunter Renfro eclipsed the 1000 yard mark in 2021. While he was targeted 7.5 times per game that year, he was targeted just five times a game in 2022 under McDaniels. 
echoing what he did to Eddie Royal all those years ago. You can make the case that that was the Devontae Adams effect, but you can also wonder if that was for the betterment of the overall team. Las Vegas passing game put up over 4,600 yards in 2021, and it failed to hit 4,000 in a year one under McDaniels. Darren Waller, a better tight end than Tony Scheffler ever was, saw under five targets a game in 2022, down from eight and a half targets a game in 2021 and nine targets per game in 2020. Again, you can point to Adams or Josh Jacobs' big year in the backfield, and they put up huge individual numbers. But at what real cost? Just like in Denver, Josh McDaniels found a way to alienate a slew of his offensive playmakers. It starts with Derek Carr. After 15 games with McDaniels, it became clear that the relationship between QB and coach simply wasn't going to last. I had never heard Derek spoken to like Josh did, one Raiders player told a Sports Illustrated reporter. He didn't drop F-bombs or ridicule him, but film sessions with Josh are brutal. Another Raiders player said that McDaniels ripped Carr more than anyone and that McDaniels was unfairly putting everything on him. Josh McDaniels had sold Derek on how much he believed in him and the criticism, I think, and it is just one guy's opinion made Derek think that Josh was dishonest, another player said. McDaniels ended up benching Carr for the final two games of the season in favor of backup Jared Stidham, who you'll be shocked to learn was a New England Patriot while McDaniels was there. Whether or not it was time for the Raiders to move on for Carr, there's no denying that he brought stability to a franchise that had to wade through passers like Kerry Collins, Andrew Walter, Jamarcus Russell, Charlie Fry, Carson Palmer, and Terrell Pryor in the post-Rich Gannon era that made them a perennial laughingstock of a team for over a decade. Carr brought them a level of respectability that can't be calculated, an unquestioned passion towards his team, McDaniels rewarded him with an unceremonious exit. Sound familiar? So how did McDaniels fill the void at quarterback? Much like when he tried to court his former muse in Matt Castle, he reached out to Jimmy Garoppolo, Tom Brady's backup from 2014 to 2017. Once again, history repeats itself. Garoppolo can win in the NFL. Kyle Shanahan has proved as much, but it takes an offense that prioritizes yards after the catch, and neither Jacoby Myers or Devontae Adams are within the top 100 in that category. He also needs a monster tight end to excel, and well, let's get to that. Changing quarterbacks wasn't enough for McDaniels. He needed to detonate a bomb within the Raiders' offense and blow it to smithereens. And that also included trading stud tight end Darren Waller? The Raiders sent Waller to the NFL's version of Siberia, shipping him to the New York Giants in exchange for a 2023 third round pick that the Raiders used to select Cincinnati wide receiver Trey Tucker, who currently has zero receptions for zero yards on just two targets through the first five games of the season. McDaniels and GM Dave Ziegler had to fill the hole at tight ends, so they spent the 35th overall pick on tight end Michael Meyer. And through five games, Meyer has contributed just three receptions for 41 yards to the Raiders offense. But wait, they also signed veteran tight end Austin Hooper, who's racked up an astounding 62 yards in the McDaniels offense. Waller playing in the saw trap that the Giants call an offense leads all New York receivers with 23 receptions and 239 yards, though that's not really bragging. Through the first five games of 2023, the Raiders are the only NFL team that has yet to score 20 points in a game. Okay, the sixth game, they scored 21 points. Hunter Renfro has been targeted just nine times. A former thousand yard receiver made essentially irrelevant in favor of former Patriot Jacoby Myers. Yes, the same Jacoby Myers that quite literally handed the Raiders a free win against New England a year ago. One might think, based on a number of factors, that Renfro would have been a perfect fit for the Josh McDaniels offense. And just not because of his paleness. Renfro excels in the slot, has elite quickness, and McDaniels has completely ignored him. Also, what happened to Josh Jacobs, the stud running back that led the entire NFL in rushing just a year ago? He wanted to get paid for his efforts, and the Raiders decided that his reward was the franchise tag, which always goes over well with superstars. Eventually, the two sides broke their stalemate just a couple weeks before the season started, and the McDaniel Ziegler duo handed him a one year deal worth $12 million, roughly $2 million more than he would have earned on the tag. 
and it hasn't worked out for either side. Jacobs is averaging less than three yards per carry after being an automatic five yards on the ground a year before. Whether that points to offensive failings by the Raiders unit as a whole, or it's just the result of a bitter holdout, that's anyone's guess. But trust me, it's not helping his value. We haven't even touched on the massive Chandler Jones signing and the subsequent release, but that's really just a sad situation. And as incompetent as Josh McDaniels is, I can't even pin that situation on him. Here's what I can though. The Raiders offense has gone from respectable to anemic in a matter of a couple years. The defense is slightly below average, but that may very well be the result of playing three games against the Broncos, Steelers, and Packers, teams that don't exactly excel in the realm of point scoring. Against a true contender like the Bills or even a fake contender like the Chargers, the Raiders were either embarrassed or exposed like a five foot eight guy lying about his height on a dating profile. For the record, I am actually 5'11". You can't give Mark Davis the benefit of the doubt when it comes to hiring Josh McDaniels. Doesn't work like that when his history as a head coach includes ripping apart a good offense in Denver and showing his true colors by leaving the Indianapolis Colts at the altar, which he did prior to the 2018 season. And it's hard to even blame McDaniels. A snake is a snake. It's in his nature to slither around and bite anyone who poses a threat to him. Mark Davis passed up on a locker room favorite for a man who's unusually adept at turning his players against him. And it should come as no surprise that he's done exactly that. Masaccia is still loved by Raiders players. I doubt you see McDaniels getting dapped up by his former guys. The Raiders are going nowhere. Mark Davis failed to smarten up when it came to hiring a head coach. They say not to listen to fans or you'll be sitting next to them soon, but they do have a point. He's been bitten by the snake. Fuck 